Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about some more angle arc theorems. It was just going to be a lesson. And I'll give you a couple of practice problems just for uh, food for thought as part of the next set of theorems. All right, here we go. Theorem 89. And again, if you're following along with some other uh, book other than the one that we've used or we're using in our class, it doesn't really matter what number it is. Uh, theorem 89 if two inscribed or tangent chord angles, are intercept the same arc, then they are congruent. Well, this theorem makes sense, right? So if I know that the measure of arc AC is equal to, without really having to prove this, measure of arc AC, let's say, is 90 degrees, then I know that the measure of the inscribed angle ABC would be 45 degrees and the measure of the inscribed angle ADC is also going to be 45 degrees. So I can say that the angle measure of angle ABC will be congruent to the measure of angle ADC. Okay, so we've already proven or shown that the measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. We just apply that prior theorem to this particular theorem. If two inscribed or tangent chord angles intercept the same arc, then they are congruent. Okay, moving on. Next, if two inscribed or tangent chord angles intercept congruent arcs, then they are congruent. All right, so I have the measure of uh, AC. Again, we can say this is 110 degrees and also DE 110 degrees. Again, I know that based on uh, the measure of inscribed and tangent chord angles being half of their intercepted arcs, I can say that ABC is equal to 55 degrees and angle EDF also equal to 55 degrees. So the measure or the angle measure uh, ABC will be equal to angle DEF. So I can say that angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF. All right, moving on, theorem 91, an angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. All right, so let's think about this for a second. Maybe you could figure out why that's the case without looking to the left-hand side. So I'm going to explain this to you. If I have a diameter, right, then the diameter cuts that circle in half. So the measure of arc AXB and the measure of arc ACB are both equal to 180 degrees. So I have 180 degrees here in AXB and 180 degrees in ACB. So I know that the measure of uh, angle C here is going to be one half the measure of its intercepted arc. And so the measure of angle C would be equal to 90 degrees, right? So the measure of AXB is equal to 180 degrees. Angle C is equal to one half the measure of uh, arc AXB. So angle C is equal to 90 degrees. So an angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. All right, our last theorem, theorem 92, at least for this lesson. Uh, I know you were probably hoping it was the last theorem of the class, but unfortunately it's not. Uh, theorem 92, the sum of the measures of a tangent tangent angle and its minor arc is 180 degrees. All right, so what we've done is we've drawn a, I'm going to draw two uh, radii, uh, AO and BO, to the center of circle O. And I've drawn my two tangents, A to C and B to C, and they intersect at point C. And what I want to prove is that the sum of the measures of the tangent angle so that's angle C here, plus the minor arc, which is arc AB, is equal to 180 degrees. So how do I know that? Well, I know that uh, OA is going to be perpendicular by definition to AC. Uh, I have a tangent AC, and I draw any uh, radius to that point of tangency. It's going to form a right angle with that tangent. So I have two right angles in OAC and OBC. Well, I know that the sum of all the angles in a quadrilateral equal 360 degrees. And if I know that angle A and angle B are both equal to 90 degrees, then I know that the balance is going to be 180 degrees, right? So the balance of AOB and ACB, angle AOB and angle ACB, will equal 180 degrees. Now, I also know that the central angle is going to be the same measure as its intersect, intercepted arc, so AB must also be equal to AOB. And if arc AB is equal to AOC, uh, then arc AB plus angle ACB will equal 180 degrees. So the sum of the measures of a tangent tangent angle and its minor arc equal 180 degrees. Again, we know that because A, uh, excuse me, OAC, OBC are both right angles. 
and I know that in a quadrilateral I have 360 degrees. So I know that the balance uh, left over for A, O, B, and angle C will be equal to 180 degrees. I know that arc AB is equal to the measure of its central angle. So by substitution, I can say that the measure of arc AB plus uh, angle ACB equal 180 degrees. All right, now let's take a look at two problems where, you'll, where you will use some of the theorems we just learned. And the first one, um, given a diagram, is shown. I have two triangles here drawn and created by a bunch of chords. And I want to prove that EV, so this segment here, EV times EN, is going to be equal to EL times SE. So what I want to do is I want to prove that these two triangles here are going to be similar. So uh, EVL and uh, ESN are going to be similar triangles. Now how do I do that? Well first I'm going to say that angle V is congruent to angle S. Angle V is congruent to angle S because they both intercept the same arc, right? They both intercept the arc LN. So if two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, then they are congruent. So angle V is congruent to angle S. Now I want to say that angle uh, L is congruent to angle S and I can do that for the same reason because they both intercept the same arc Vs. Right? So for the same reason, angle L is congruent to angle N. Now I can say triangle LVE is going to be congruent to NSE by AA. Uh, and I give the uh, reasons 1 and 2. Now I can say that EV over SE is equal to EL over EN. And that's because ratios of corresponding sides of similar triangles are equal. And then by using the means extremes product theorem, I can rewrite number four as EV times EN is equal to EL times SE. All right, so we've used the theorem that says if two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, then they are congruent to prove two similar triangles. And based on the two similar triangles, we go back to our similarity uh, postulates, which say that ratios of corresponding sides of uh, similar triangles are equal, and then the means extremes product theorem uh, and we end up with EV times EN is equal to EL times SE. All right, the last problem I want you to look at in circle O, segment BC is a diameter, and the radius of circle, uh, the radius of the circle is 20.5 millimeters. Chord AC has a length of 40 millimeters, which is given. Find AB. All right, so I want you to think about this problem for a second, and then we'll move on to the solution. Right, well, I know, remember, if I have a diameter, I've created a diameter and I have a triangle that's uh, inscribed in a circle based on the diameter, then I know that that angle, uh, the inscribed angle, is going to be equal to 90 degrees, at least the inscribed angle that corresponds to the diameter as the opposite side of that angle will be equal to 90 degrees. So I know BAC is equal to 90 degrees. Remember BC, uh, if I just determine this point here, BXC, is going to be 180 degrees. So I know that angle BAC is one half of the measure of BXC. So if BXC is 180 degrees, then angle BAC is equal to 90 degrees. So I have a right angle. I can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve. I know radius, uh, the radius of circle O is 20.5 millimeters. So I know the diameter BC is going to be equal to 41. The diameter ends up being the hypotenuse. So I can write my Pythagorean theorem as 40 millimeters squared plus x squared, which is ab squared, is equal to bc or 41 squared. Uh, I subtract 40 squared from 41 squared and I end up with 81. So I can solve for x and x ends up being 9 millimeters. All right, so that's how you use some of the theorems to solve for problems in this chapter. Uh, we're going to go on to more practice problems in the next edition, so come and join us for more angle arc theorems and their related problems in the next edition of Auden Math.